Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am Kristen Ostrander, your host, and I am so glad that you're listening today because we have an amazing story and an amazing guest to share with you and all of his wonderful expertise. His name is Al Berezny, and we met at Lorraine County Community College at an Amazon hosted event. So yeah, that was if you guys have been following social a few months back, you know, before quarantine, when we actually could go outside and go places. Um, we met at this um, event Amazon was holding in Ohio where they had a bunch of small businesses come to kind of learn what they could do to start a small business on Amazon. And Al was one of their panelists for being an awesome top-notch seller for many years and he lived in the area. Um, and I just was like, hey, I got to connect with him because his story just resonated with me and we talked before and after. And guess what? He is a bundler. Bundler and long time, like we, we go way back. Like if you ever meet anyone who speaks your Amazon language, like who speaks Amazon, you're like geek out a little, right? Because you could literally talk for days and days. And that's how Al and I were like right away. They even caught our picture as a paper, like the local paper. He said this to me. And it was like a snapshot of us just like chatting. Like, I don't know why they wanted that on the front page, but it was still kind of cute to have that on there. So he's been doing e-commerce probably longer than me. Um, I don't remember the exact date. He will share that with us. But first, if you want to connect with me and with Al and with other amazing Amazon sellers, you need to come to our Facebook group. You need to go there by mommyincome.com slash join us. And of course, you need a code word. Why? Because we want to make sure that you're in the right place with the right people. Al's story, hashtag Al's story is your code word to get into the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us. And you can ask all of your amazing questions there. And lots of people are ready to help you and ready to answer your questions whether you're just getting started or you're like how do I import from China we have everything from here to there to be able to answer your questions so after that this is where you get to meet Al. Al welcome to the show I would love to see you there there's Al welcome thank you so much for taking the time out of your crazy busy day to um, hang out with us here at Mommy Income. Hey Krista thanks a lot for inviting me I'm looking forward to this. Oh, I mean, I remember like you and I, all the couple of times we've already talked is like, just can go on for hours because we just geek out about all this Amazon stuff. I, mean, I, I put other... aside four hours for tonight for us. So does that work? <laughs> what? You put aside four hours for us. Is that right. <laughs> four hours. Yeah, right. I mean, we probably could. So um, tell us a little bit about you and your family. Okay. Well, we, uh, this is a family business that's grown into this. In fact, uh, it started off that way in the early days, and we'll talk about those, but my wife and I were doing this. In fact, my son was packing products since he was about 13, and now it's my, uh, my wife and I and my son and his wife. Uh, we do this full-time, and we have a couple other part-time people, including a cousin of mine who helps us with uh, packing things, um, but it really is a, a family business, and it's been that way for a long time. A family business. That's really awesome. I know you said your son and is it his wife maybe or wife, yeah. yeah. See, you've got the whole big family. And I, as soon as you said packing stuff since age 13, that's like all my kids have ever known. Right. You know, I started my eBay business in 2003, the year my daughter was my middle daughter was born. So my son was only three years old. So they've always only ever known house business and e-commerce from my, my side. So before you were an e-commerce expert, what, what were you doing for a living before that? I, uh, I actually had gone to college and majored in manufacturing management. So I was involved in manufacturing plants from materials management to, to shop floor management, to running the plants, to running multiple plants. Did a lot of moving around every three years. They were relocating us for work. And uh, it was everything I ever wanted in my career. Uh, I studied for it. I got there and really life was pretty good. And then and, we stumbled and, onto the fun part of e-commerce. Yeah. So, so when you were doing manufacturing, how did you, how did you get into e-commerce? What year was that? Like, let us put us way back, right? <laughs> I beat you by a few years. I looked that old. I go way back. Um, I beat you by a few years. We started in 1999. Okay. And, um, and we had moved to uh, Oklahoma and my son was in middle school and he was interested in baseball cards. So we would go there. They had auctions and we could, you know, get cards very cheap. And I heard about eBay. I go, hey, let's sell them on eBay, make money to buy the cards he wants. Kind of make it a no cost hobby. And uh, a friend of mine that I was talking to that I'd worked with in the industry before. And he said, wow, that eBay sounds really cool. We got to find a way to make money on eBay, not just doing cards. You know, I said, okay. He says, well, I know somebody that sold fashion jewelry. We should look at doing that. I said, hey, I'm game of you. He lived in actually Dallas at the time. I lived in Oklahoma City. 
And he called me up one Sunday, he says, send me a check for $175. I said, why am I doing that? He said, you owe me that because I bought $350 worth of jewelry today. We're in the fashion jewelry business. So that's how we started. We invested $175 each. And uh, he scanned the jewelry back then for a picture. He handled all the purchasing. He handled all the shipping. I did all the ads. I got all the payments and processed them. So even though we weren't very close, we, uh, we kind of did a division of labor. And we did that for a few years together. Awesome. And then we, decided, I, we wanted I'm... to both go our own way. I love jewelry so much. It's funny because you say you, you know, I know, I know more of the story than everyone else. So we'll get to that. But um, it's funny that like you're, you came out of jewelry and like I go into jewelry only my jewelry is like vintage old estate mm -hmm. pieces and things like that, that I just, I love to clean it up and play with it. And just, I, I like that part. That's like a side, side, side hustle now. <laughs> but um, so you're selling, you know, you started selling with this partner, like were you partners for a long time or, you know, probably about uh, two years or so. And then he wanted to get into it. He was actually uh, thinking about it. And he dropped out of his regular job. He was also in manufacturing management sooner than I did to go address this, you know, full time. And uh, I wasn't quite ready to do that yet. He'll probably see this. So I'll, I'll just say gently, he's a little bit older than I am uh, <laughs> by a few years. So he was further along and ready to, to step back and, and take the risk of doing it on his own. So when did that happen for you? When, when did, so you saw him do that before you, you're on eBay, obviously you're doing well with the jewelry and you didn't just make that one purchase, but you did a couple of years of this. So what, what was the trigger point of you deciding, this is what I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to pursue as full time. When was that journey? Well, that we, we got to the, in, in 2002, we got to the point where I was probably at about half of my regular income from eBay. And I had commented to the wife that I'd, uh, you know, really think we should think about just quitting and doing this full time. But I was involved, I was back in Ohio, where I'm at right now, close to family. And it's like, well, we're doing a lot of great things with the company here. I really can't leave yet. And they decided to do a management shakeup. And I came home one day and I told my wife, sit down, I got good news. She says, what's that? I said, I lost my job. I said, I, I got love that. Say it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went around and told our friends, look, here's the good news. I all got, all got to let go today. But uh, I was in a good enough position where I had a six-month package with full benefits and hospitalization and everything. So I said, we got six months. If we can match my salary in six months, I'm not going to look for work. If we now don't- this, go I got to interrupt you here because this is so timely for people. This is during COVID. This is a time where there's tons of people that have gotten laid off, that will get laid off, that will never get a callback that they think, oh, I'm gonna go back to my job. Even if they hated it, they're just thinking they have this thing. When reality is that a lot of us, not us, a lot of people, listeners, are going to not be called back. And so thinking about good news, I lost my job might be terrifying to some people, but I think your story just brings so much hope because at the time you were starting in this side hustle that you thought was a side hustle and you were almost forced to see if you could make it work. So, um, so during that time, what was what was your strategy well we were really successful with the jewelry obviously to get the half the income you know that we did in, in just a few years um and back then it was a little bit easier you know you know you got in about the same time that, that we started doing this on our own if you almost put it out on ebay with a good ad and a reasonable picture you had a pretty good chance of selling competition wasn't there you didn't have the foreign competition um you didn't have prices getting beat down all the time so it was almost like more was more. You know, if you had 200 items listed and you were making X, if you did 400, you could almost make 2X. So okay. it was more just of a volume game. The I call it the Midas touch there. days of e-commerce, yes. right? At the beginning when like literally you could not lose like anything. And I feel the same way about Amazon too. When I first got into Amazon was that like literally there was no product left unsold. I didn't have right. a death eBay death pile over here just taunting me to list all the stuff. There literally was every time I listed something, it was selling and like it just you know, it was fresh and new and it was a, a newer experience before all the competition. So uh, obviously you quit the job and you never went back and you do that. So, so after that six months, what, what was the, what was the plan during that time? Well, we just, you know, it was just focusing our attention on the growth of the business. You know, no matter how good we were doing, you're always, there's always things you could run out of stock on or always new products you could be adding. And my wife was doing a majority of, of this work you know, I was working a full-time job and I was traveling for work. 
So my wife would be the one, I'd get up in the morning before work, do emails, list items. While I'm at work, she was packing products, standing in line at the post office. I'd come home at night, more emails, you know. So it was, it was both of us involved in this and we kept it going and, and growing, uh, the two of us together. And my son involved in the background helping her. Um, so it was just, okay, now we're gonna have two of us full time where do you find the gaps? Where do you find the holes? I mean, we were doing all we could as part-timers. And then again, it was new, new suppliers, new products, new listings, staying here, keeping your stock. And it's very, it's very funny because I was talking to one of my jewelry suppliers today, or actually yesterday, and um, his best-selling item is still our best-selling jewelry item. And we've been selling that since about 2003. And it's been our best-selling item all the time. It's just a staple that women love. It's a ring. Yeah. And they've been carrying it. And, you know, when you can do an ad and you can ride the ad for 17 years. You're hey, pretty... that's called passive income, right? Right, right. It's not, as, it's not as strong as it used to be, but it's still a very good item for us. See, there you go. Some of the things do have longevity. I mean, you know, just classic things that never wear out. That's something, you know, a lot of people talk about evergreen or, you know, versus seasonal and things like that. It's like there are things that people just buy on a regular basis that just really aren't going to go out of style. I mean, especially when you talk about jewelry, like silver hoop earrings are never going out of style. Right. I don't care where you are. I've been buying them since the eighties and I'm still like, still have a pair. So, you know, some of those types of things. So, so you're doing jewelry, you're not full-time. Let me ask this, like from a family dynamic standpoint, do you and your wife have separate offices? Yes. <laughs> That's for sanity. I know yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. She, she needs an award because we've been doing this now full-time for seven, 18 years. So, and I actually was with a, with a job where I traveled a lot different times in my jobs and my son was in high school and we started doing this full time. He said, dad, you used to never be home. Now you never leave. Please go somewhere. Um, so if you can imagine, you know, working the struggle is real. House for 18 years, it's, um, she's a saint. Yeah. yeah. I think everybody involved can be like that, especially one that works from home and not only handles a home working job, both of you guys, you know, being at home or working from home and having a family and separating all of those tasks and spaces and places that the struggle is real. Like, especially yeah. a lot of people are learning this things we've known for years are now being out in the world of people working from home and managing kids and families and being quarantined. And it's been kind of crazy, but um, some of us are already used to it. It's just a matter of now I just can't go to the restaurant. I can't go to the movies or right. concert. But other than that, my work environment's still the same. Exactly right. We've had a less change than a lot of people have had. I joke about it that my husband's like the, like I said, I'm human resources. Cause you know, we're just as a married couple, you always have inside jokes and he says something. I'm like, I'm reporting that to HR. <laughs> <laughs> That's harassment. Oh, it just, it's kind of a fun family dynamic to get used, used to it, but it definitely has some challenges and your own space helps to regulate right. those challenges. Okay. But so my daughter-in-law, something goes on. I tell her I'm putting it in her personnel file. Yeah. Her personnel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing you up. Right. <laughs> um, Okay, so so you have that. So then what's next is you're selling jewelry on eBay, you're full time, the six months has come and gone, and you've literally made this thing work. When right. did you when did you f decide that eBay was not enough and that maybe Amazon or other channels might be something you need to explore? Well, you know, um, eBay really seemed like enough back then. And what really, and, Am, and Amazon had locked off jewelry. Jewelry was a closed category for a lot of years. And probably one of my strategic mistakes I made, maybe, many years before was when Amazon did branch out of books, I had the philosophy of who wants to go sell jewelry on a book site? You know, mm -hmm. well, in hindsight, maybe I should have jumped in, obviously, when they started doing that. The other part of it is, Selling on Amazon has a lot of rules and regulations and challenges. In jewelry especially, you have you know, government requirements, what you can call your jewelry, how you do things. And maybe if I jumped in back then, I wouldn't know what I knew years later to make sure I did it properly. Maybe I wouldn't be there still today. But we couldn't get anywhere else and we were doing really well. And you know, you worked hard, but you could afford to go golfing with your friends in the middle of the day because you could work at night. And, you know, he did certain things, but then I got contacted by Amazon in about 2013. They wanted to open up the jewelry category. They had cleaned house on a lot of people that weren't following the rules and they wanted to bring in more sellers. 
So I was fortunate enough to have them contact me and I joined, you know, 2013 and jewelry was humming well on Amazon. So I was purely nothing but a, a fashion jewelry seller. You know, it's just low dollar things. You know, gold plated, mm -hmm. sterling silver with fake stones, you know, yeah, average. costume jewelry. Yeah, you know, your average run of the mill, jewelry. you know, costume jewelry. But if somebody said, geez, it didn't come in the mail, so what, you send them another one. You know, you're not dealing with real diamonds and stones for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can Oh, heck no, I'd be so scared. <laughs> yeah, small, small little things that happen. When you started, were you merchant fulfilling or were you FBA? When I got on Amazon, the, the woman that kind of recruited me that I met with on, on Amazon over the phone, she's like, you need to try FBA. You need to do FBA. And I would no, no, I don't. No, I don't. I know what I'm doing because I've been packing this stuff out of my house for 11 years or well, actually going back to 99, 13 years or so. I don't, it doesn't make any sense. Why would I put this in little boxes? I'll send them to the warehouse for you because they all trust me want to do FBA and I did FBA and sales jumped there's definitely more visibility there's people that are shopping um, prime only so if they're looking at prime only and you're not FBA they're not seeing your item um, I, I didn't wait very long I probably did it within a few weeks after meeting with her a couple of times um, and she was right I mean FBA is I'm a solid solid believer in FBA yeah, a hundred percent. And I know it's funny because in these times that we're in now, unprecedented times, you know, before FBA, like before COVID, FBA was like the only way. I like I literally right. had not purchased, I had not processed a merchant fulfill order. I'm only, I mean, I do in my eBay store for different reasons, but I haven't done a merchant fulfill order in years and years. And then all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> Amazon cut off FBA for a time and, you know, Merchant Fulfill is back. But for those of you guys who are still coming to the end of some of this stuff, hopefully, and um, Amazon Prime is coming back and FBA is coming back with a probably bigger and stronger than ever. If we know anything about Jeff Bezos and his crazy um, ideas and processes, I'm sure it will be back and stronger than ever. But right now we're in this like limbo time. So, so you get into FBA, you believed the lady, you took a leap, you started sending stuff in and sales jumped. And so you're still doing jewelry. Uh, is that is still your primary like category that you're selling in? Right. Absolutely. It was, you know, it was going fantastic. Um, everything was humming. It was simple. It was easy. We felt like we had the formula, you know, almost to the point where probably a little too comfortable. Mm. Because it hasn't changed on us in a lot of years. You know, you're putting small things and, you know, we, we also were on eBay and wish and Walmart. Um, and all three of those are the same shipping from here. You know, it's easy, small packages. Um, and then, Amazon decided that they were going to open the jewelry category to the world. It wasn't wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, exactly talk about changing our life almost instantly. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, cause nothing that we do and, and you know, there's nothing proprietary about what we do. You know, people, people can find our jewelry suppliers. You know, you go out there and I found jewelry suppliers by looking at competitors jewelry. Well, this, of course, you know, this is a really lot a great item. Good. Let me try to find who sells this, you know? So when you let anybody go in and there's no, no blocking of it, it got very hard, very competitive. Um, you know, people aren't always thinking about profit margins when they're starting. Um, they we're buying products that are getting made and we never, we've never brought it in from China, but our suppliers would have things from China, stainless steel rings. Well, the manufacturers in China started selling on eBay and Amazon. So, I mean, it made the cat. We still do jewelry, but it's it went from 100% of our business to probably 15 right now. Yeah, no, all the eggs in one basket. If that happens, then, you right. know, you kind of cut your throat. And we, what do we know about Amazon? We know that Amazon shoots first and asks questions later. They have their best interest in mind most of the time. No, I'm not beating right. up on Amazon. Y'all know right. I'm still a seller. I still, oh. That's my bread and butter. So love you, Amazon, even though I don't agree with everything you do. But they do do that. All of a sudden, they do a fell swoop of something just like they did for COVID. They're just like, due to this, we are just not allowing any more shipments unless it's an essential item and we get to choose what's essential. <laughs> like, excuse me, my granola bars are very essential. 
these, right. this, these stainless steel rings that I want are essential. I should be able to sell those and buy those, but they get to decide. So you always have to diversify. So when Amazon comes in and they say, oh, guess what? The whole world can sell costume jewelry now. Now, what was your shift then? What did you do about that? Well, we, we decided we had to obviously branch into some other products. And we tried to focus on something that wouldn't be as small as jewelry, but trying to find things that were smallish, you know? So we kind of fell into some home decor type items. Um, and, you know, we didn't, everything didn't stay small, but that's kind of where our focus started. And started going out to some shows. You know, you go out to shows in Atlanta, shows in Dallas, shows in Vegas, where, you know, you have a massive amount of, of manufacturers you can talk to. And that was our approach. We didn't uh, we didn't talk about buying things ourselves and private private labeling from overseas. We wanted to get with reputable people that could supply us on a regular basis and had some brand names that people liked. And um, and we went out to the show and found back then people were pretty willing to let us sell on Amazon. You know, a lot of people when you say back didn't then, want Amazon only, but what year was that? Let's go back rough time wise for that was that was about 2016 we started doing this mm -hmm. in, in non-jewelry items okay. uh, but we you know it was still a learning experience because we go there we go to shows you talk to xyz company and my wife would go god i love this product you know i buy their stuff all the time it's fabulous and they go sure we'll sell you our product to sell on amazon and we come back and we're all excited we're placing orders and we're getting product and then you put the product out there and you go, there's no money in this product. You know, and we put brand name, excellent stuff out there and you go, why are people selling this so cheap? And how are they selling it so cheap? And we soon found out that there weren't a lot of products you can make money on doing that. And you're fighting for pennies and fighting sometimes negative, trying to get cash flow going to come in. Yeah, so it was that, a great opportunity, but we learned quickly that just going out and finding somebody will sell it to you doesn't mean you can sell it profitably. Yes, just because you and, and I think that the biggest we hear this all the time. We all you have heard it. I've heard it. You've experienced it. I've experienced it. Or people say these people are losing money if they're selling it at this price, even if they're mm -hmm. getting a better discount from X, Y, Z vendor over here. They are still selling this, they're still losing money unless they're getting it for free, you know, because we know Amazon fees, right? And so same type of thing, except for at the same time, you and that part of the world, me and that part of the world, the same time we both figured out something. It was called bundling, right? It's like all of a sudden we can, how can we sell this product and still make a good profit margin and not lose, you know, every single dollar and work for, for pennies. And we're not Walmart. We can't be volume sellers like that because number one, space number two money so what are we going to do instead so talk about your your idea for your first bundle i mean you don't have to tell us the products but like the sure. idea of like what if we did this and i'll be honest with you i don't even know what the first bundle was we put together and i'm i'm going to guess thinking back that i probably didn't invent it <laughs> you know in my mind mm -hmm. i probably saw somebody doing something similar you know out on amazon for all I know, it could have been you. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't, it, it, people did that even back then. And somehow seeing that said, boy, this really makes sense. And, you know, I kind of view items as widgets. You know, I'm looking to make similar money. I don't care if it's an expensive item, a cheap item. I'm looking to make a similar profit off of it. And if I put two items together and that's a widget or one item is a widget, as long as I make the same amount of money, there's a tad extra labor to it. Mm -hmm. putting them together and making a bundle out of it. Um, but a bundle for a tad less money is better than not selling any of the individual product. And yeah, or selling at a loss. Warehouse, right, waiting and waiting and waiting. You you wish everybody else would run out finally. Yeah. These people are giving it away um, so you can finally sell yours. Yeah. 
So, so when you come to that, you know, you're thinking about that and I think we're probably, you know, selling bundles at the same time and then, aha, this works, right? You've put some mm -hmm. things together, you've paired, you know, your, your items that you might have. And this is still a suggestion that works today. As we tell people all the time, like if you have a dud seller, you know, creating a bundle and creating a value for somebody to do that is such a key thing to think about um, when it comes to your profit as a business, whether you have an inventory based business or other things, even services now are bundling. I mean, the whole progressive commercials, right? Like I laugh because my youngest daughter who is now nine, um, when we were watching TV one night and they said something about, you know, bundling products together for something, it was a progressive commercial. And she said, like, Hey mom, isn't that what you do? Do you work? And I was like, well, yeah, but it's not quite the same. Cause they were talking about bundling your home and auto insurance right, or whatever. And right. It's the same concept, except for you're just putting, you know, products together. So when that, that works for the first time, then did you guys have like this aha moment and, um, decided that we're going to continue this? Pretty much. That's about where it is. And in fact, and it's gone to the point where our biggest challenge with buying things now is we find something that excites us. And unless it's pretty obvious, our, our first question to each other is, what do we bundle it with? What do we bundle well, it with? If That's we find like something to bundle it with, we're not getting it. It doesn't matter how much we like it. If we can't come up with something that looks like it's going to go well with it, then we walk away from it. And, um, and we pretty much stick with I've changed our philosophy from, I used to spend so much time a week trying to find more suppliers, more suppliers, more suppliers. And then I realized we have some pretty outstanding suppliers that have some pretty extensive catalogs. So we've kind of shifted our strategy over the last year, year and a half, that we try to take advantage of everything that the people we have relationship with can offer us. And we're nowhere near close to that because they have so much. Um, but why not use that? That allows us to get better relationships, better discounts. You know, everything works out for us that way. We still look for new people, but to us, if we find somebody that's really, really good, why not ride their product hard? Absolutely. I cannot say this enough, especially if people have exclusives or some sort of deal with, with a vendor or the best ones too are the ones to connect with and stay with that have have since closed their doors to Amazon sellers right. um, to the yeah. point where they have enough Amazon sellers and even bundlers and they, they get to the point where they're like, okay, we're not accepting you. So now, you know, competition's not going to increase with this vendor. So let's, you know, take this to the max. I can't express that enough to people. I think so many people are all about consumption and how many vendors can I get? And how many, what if I run out of suppliers when you could, I could literally do this and I'm sure you could too. Cause you know, we, we share some vendors. And right. so the idea there is like, you, and Amy and I used to talk about this too. I can, you and I can sit down with the same exact catalog and come up with completely different bundles from our experience, from just looking at what we think we know, you know, even after 20 years, we can look at that and go, I know this, this, and this would sell. And you have a different experience and we could literally come up with a completely different set of bundles from the same catalog. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's so important because I think people just constantly want all this new and fresh and they're ch chasing trends and they're chasing all these other things. And really like, the money is in the boring stuff. The money is in stuff that's just kind of never really changes a whole lot. And yeah, it doesn't really seem that fun to sell. I, I joke about like tarps and bungee cords, but they're like a match right. made in heaven. People are always using tarps and bungee cords at the same time because they have those little grommets and what's going to cover up the snow off of my four wheeler. Cause I can't fit it in the garage. Like, you know, those sort of things, but it's like this match made in heaven that it doesn't have to be sexy. It just has to be profitable. <laughs> hey, absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, you're right about the differences. Why I tease my daughter-in-law all the time. She's picked up, she does a lot of the bundling for us, picking some things out. And I shake my head at a bundle she puts together sometimes. And I go, I don't, I don't see that working. And then we sell one, we sell two, we sell three, we sell 10. And I go, you I, win. I, didn't think, I didn't think this was going to work, but you know, here you go again. You picked one. My son's the same way. This thing, you know, and I think that helps too, because different generations look at things differently than we do. So I look at something and I'm an old man looking at it. When you have people in their twenties and thirties looking at something, they see it differently. That is so hard. important. And I think that's why your business works so well too, is because you have these multi-generations. We have the same thing in our family business as well. I mean, we're not complete family. My husband does construction and doesn't want anything to do with this, only the 
well, he likes the profits. He doesn't like the process, but like my mom and I are business partners. And so she looks at things differently than I do. And then our full-time admin administrator, um, he helps with all the ordering and stuff like that too. He's 22. And so he's like, he sees things differently than we do. And we all have these like powwows of like, okay, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And we consult each other and we come up with these you know, and some of us go, oh, you know, some of us are like, I don't know about that one, but we just let it fly. It's only a test, right? I mean, mm -hmm. most places they sell in 12s is the general case pack or something. So, so what happens if you sell 12 bundles and, you know, they're kind right. of, yeah. So, so when it comes to your bundling, now, do you guys do everything in-house still? Yes. Yeah. We touch everything. We bundle everything. I just don't have a comfort level of letting outsiders do something that can affect my Amazon business. Um, and that's where, you know, we look at people, people that can have better pricing than you. And I have some suppliers, I buy some fairly large volumes from and when I talk to my sales rep and I know they might even rep somebody that's way bigger than I am on Amazon. I know who the person is. Mm -hmm. Well, they do things like buying huge quantities, sending them directly to the warehouse and letting the warehouse label them for them while they're saving the shipping, you know, they're shipping it once, not twice. You know, there's people, when you see things out there cheap, there are people that have better prices than you, no matter how good your price is. There's somebody that's buying more. There's somebody that can find a little shortcut. But those few pennies for me aren't worth it. I don't want somebody to bundle something incorrectly, and then my reputation on Amazon is at risk. Well, and the, My selling on Amazon might be at risk if there's complaints. Absolutely. And I think too, with the structure that you have, um, then, you know, I, I use a prep center because I don't want to mm -hmm. do all the packing and shipping, but I was the same. And so was my mom at first, you know, Nathan at my prep center.com. Yes. Shameless plug for Nathan, because they are amazing over there. Nathan, they're a family business as well. Um, but he was a former Amazon seller and he was a book guy. I mean, he was books, books, books. And after the whole, um, penny book type thing went away and I want to say around 2014 or 15 or something like that when literally penny books were so profitable before where you can literally sell a book for $3.99 and Amazon ships at FBA but you still made a profit on that even though it was like the lowest cost and then they changed that whole structure well that basically put him out of business and he had to kind of you know jump ship real quick and then you know, as he got into it, it was a prep center and he reached out to me because we had met at a meetup someplace and he's like, I really want to open a prep center and I want to do bundles and I want you to be my first client and I want to prep your inventory for free until we get it right. And I was like, no, I literally just like blew him off. And at first, but he was persistent. Squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Right. And he called me again about a month later and he's like, I'm still serious about this. Could you just give it a shot? And I'm willing to, you know, whatever. And he we kind of came up with a process together. And I think that's why I trust them so much because, you know, I was like, well, this is how we do things. And if you're not going to do things like this, or at least close to this, like we're saying, no, my mom was absolutely not on board. I don't know if that's an old school thing or not, but she was the same way that you were talking about. She was like, no one's touching our inventory. And what if they screw it up? And what about this? And when I said, we're just going to send them a hundred units. If they screw up and we lose a bunch of money, which they already promised they would pay for all mistakes, right. then what's the, what do we got to lose? Because I said, mom, we were doing everything in house too and heavier stuff. I mean, you guys are doing jewelry. That's not heavy lifting. We're carrying right. and huffing 40, 50 pound boxes in and out of the garage every single day when Nathan approached us. So I said, mom, you want to carry these 40 pound boxes every single day? Cause I sure don't. And I'm not getting any younger and neither are you. Right. <laughs> and so that ended up being, the switch but I totally understand that plus you guys have other family members that are working for you that are supported by the salary I mean if they're doing packaging and shipping and you outsource that then they don't have jobs right so we didn't have that kind of help here. my son is is uh, 33 34 years old and a lot of muscle so he's one because right. we now have 40 pound boxes going out every day because of the non-jewelry items right. um yeah, you're you know, the king I, of the I, castle. You don't have to do the box work anymore. I still do some, but I pass it off a lot. Yeah. Um, but I did. I did look at your that gentleman's website because I found him on your on your pages, and um, you know, it looks. If you're going to try it, it looks very interesting because I looked at his pricing and go, gee, I know what I have built into my cost. But you look at it; he's all inclusive when he does everything. He's down to the boxes. He's down to the labeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if there's somebody that want to find somebody even a business his or somebody else's, there's a lot of value to add to that. We're fortunate enough that we can run this all out of our basement. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we tell people now we no longer live in a house. We live in a warehouse. Pretty much. <laughs> it's all over the place, but our basement is fairly large and we're able to manage it out of there. But uh, there's a lot to be said for 
outside people doing that. For sure. I know I used to joke, that was one of my jokes at one of my talks years ago was like, you know, you're an Amazon seller if your main decor is cardboard. <laughs> We don't have household decor. We just have cardboard. We make right. stuff out of cardboard because that's all that's here. So you, know, you get into bundling, you've got this family business. So, so how long have you guys, you know, once you made the shift from jewelry to now you've got some of these other products in your bundling, you know, what is, what does that timeline look like? Like how long from when you started, you know, the bundling until, you know, today, now it's 2020. Right. How, well, it, it went pretty smooth and it went up pretty rapidly. I mean, we covered the, um, the jewelry losses um, quite a bit as we, as we jumped in the bundling site. We had a rough year in there where the jewelry was going down and the, we hadn't figured out the bundling aspect yet. And we we're dumping some product at cost or below because we couldn't compete with, you know, the, the people that are doing that. Um, but, you know, Amazon is kind of interesting because there's a lot of products that don't make it but there's a lot of products that do. And you can put something out there, it's ama amazing. You know, we have some graduation items out there right now, some graduation bundles. And who knows what's going on with graduations this year, but we just popped three or four of them in the last couple of days. And it's not even the hype of graduation season yet. And don't know what that really is anymore. <laughs> you can put something out there right away and see some traction. I tell you when it's going to Bundles be that haven't sold in months or years, you know, or not yet. I tell you when graduation season is going to be, it's going to be July and August because yes. I know at least around here, um, they're starting to reschedule those. So my, my nephew was just named salutatorian of his high school graduating class. And although he, he's probably going to be graduating from high school and going to college at, in the very same week because yeah. they postponed his, his actual ceremony until August. So they are having graduations. They're rescheduling a lot of these things. They might do things differently during these virus times and stuff, but um, they are going to. So hang in there with graduation because people right. are still sending gifts. People are still recognizing graduates, whether it's college or high school or whatever. Um, we've actually have some graduation items right now that are selling pretty rapidly. Now, mm -hmm. if Amazon could just let us send more in, that would be great. <laughs> okay, you know, so. Our, our approach to bundling, and, and I know there's two different ones maybe, or more than two, but there's a lot of people that go after the approach of, and, and you see a lot of these companies that, that offer good services on helping you find products to sell. And, you know, go find a widget that's got only so many sellers and only so much feedback and go over to China and negotiate a price and bring in a thousand of them at your best price and put your little sticker on it and throw it out in the warehouse. That went, people did that for a couple of years and probably a fairly successfully advertised the heck out of it, put a lot of money in advertising. And we just take, you know, we don't do that. We buy this product from, you know, brand name people, or maybe the brand name isn't known, but the product's known and respected. And, um, and we do it differently. We don't go out and buy a thousand of anything because I can get it from my supplier in 48 hours. And some bundles sell none. Some bundles we're selling 60, 80, 100 a month. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we've got- Why not deep, right? Why yeah, not deep? We've got hundreds of bundles out there right now. Well, and interestingly enough, one of the reasons I wanted to have this conversation is because, yeah, I'm not, you know, of course I'm, I love my wholesale bundle system and I love to share it with people and I want people to be educated on that. And I use my own framework. This is my mm -hmm. research process. This is my framework. And what's interesting of the differences between us, we're both very successful Amazon sellers and bundlers alike. And everybody has a different process and a different concept. See, I don't like to sell anything that's really name brand. And when I say mm -hmm. name brand, I mean like it doesn't really have a brand. It's just something that people want that like, like I talked about tarps and bungee cords, mm -hmm. literally you can, no one can name a brand of tarps really. And if you can, it's like something, no, it's not a household name. For example, you're just like, I need a 10 by 10 blue tarp or brown or whatever color yeah. you want. Like, blue tarps are so redneck, but like they just are, they've always been made blue and now they're making different colors. I don't know why I know so much about tarps, uh, but I do. So the reality there though, is I like to go after um, products that people 
use and want to buy every day. There's a lot of search volume on Helium 10 and on um, Merchant Words about those things, but like there, there's no brand anyone would recognize. Like uh, a tarp is a tarp, but HDMI cord is an HDMI cord. As long as it does what you want it to do, it has the attributes, then that's, you know, what I go after. I don't like a lot of the name brands because then I don't have brand restrictions. I don't have issues with any of that. I just like, hey, I've got tarps and bungee cords. It's perfectly what you need, you know, go buy it. And so um, I love that there's so many different approaches, but the concept is still the same that bundles you know this wholesale product plus this wholesale product equals more margin for you there's one fee there's one bag there's one label it's not all these you know we're not walmart and we never are gonna be because i don't know about you but i don't have you know 10 billion dollars in a bank account somewhere i'd be in fiji and not on a podcast if you did we wouldn't be talking today <laughs> we wouldn't be doing this we'd be yeah we'd be hanging out in the island somewhere golfing or doing something other than selling on amazon but the reality is we can't be volume sellers so instead said we what's the greatest thing about bundles is that we can focus on profit margin and also bringing value to the customer I mean you and I have talked at length about different bundles and things you sell and I've also seen some of the stuff that you have and it's the creating of value to the customer like purchasing these things we're one click society right people just want to click buy it now add to cart they don't want to add four or five things to the cart and make sure they all coordinate, especially if it's a gift item. They're just like, hey, this is great. Just add it to cart. I know you've mentioned doing a lot of Mother's Day stuff and that has now come and gone, but the reality is like the bundles for Mother's Day do well because someone's just looking for that perfect gift and they don't want to add four or five things because guess what happens with that? If you buy five things from Amazon that's not a bundle, chances are they're all going to come to that person at different times and in different boxes and now you've got all this access to where if you can just make a wonderful gift set and put it in a bundle you know makes so much sense the, the main the name branding we don't we, we're trying to do some things that are not name branded but when you have some brands too it does help to the extent that if somebody searches a brand and they see product a and it costs 10 bucks and they see product b and it costs 10 bucks but we have in the bundle for 16.99 Somebody looks and goes, well, I was going to buy that for mom for $10 and something else. Well, for $7 more, I got two different ones. There and they you go. complement each other. So you really, sometimes we think the name branding brings people to us because they're searching for that. Yeah. But individual ones still carry the bulk of the sales. But you can be right as rain to sit there and never sell any of them yourself. Yeah. And the bundling gets us our fair share of the sales. And that's what I love about the 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 idea and concept of bundling is that you know one you know one man's concept is a different man's concept and you can all do the different ones and it's still working great for for both of us and I think that's right. world worldwide as everyone is listening and wondering if bundling is right for them. Um, if bundling is right for you if you're sick of you know, competition and everyone price tanking and always, I don't use a repricer. Why? Because I don't need a repricer. Why? Because there's no competition on any of my listings <laughs> because I made them all and I'm brand registered and I have my own packaging and I have suppliers that you don't have. So <laughs> that's why this works. Right. And that's why we're teaching people to do that. And, and someone asked me recently, and I know we just kind of talked about this, but I want your take on it too, is people say, Kristen, you're crazy. Why are you on your podcast and you're on your YouTube and you're on this Facebook all the time and you're telling people how to do your business model? Aren't you cutting your own throat? And I'm like, yeah, aren't you bringing your, you're training up your competition. And I'm like, actually, no. And what, what's your answer to that? If someone was to say, well, you're telling everybody about bundles. I mean, you got up in front of 200 and some people and said, you know, talked all about your business and everything else. And oh my gosh, aren't you scared to share this information? What, what is your take on that? Well, there's probably two parts to that answer for me. One is there's so many products out there that the odds that we're sharing, and I don't know, you know what your audience number is, how many people will see this, the odds of them jumping and competing with you or me exactly on our product line, on our brands or our unbrands, although I'm out shopping tarps and, and bungee cords as I hang up here now with you. <laughs> um, you know, um, the odds of them getting in with us exactly. I mean, it's a humongous world of the suppliers out there. So I'm not worried about that. The other part of it is just like with the group we saw at uh, at Lorain County Community College, um, there was 200 and some people there. They, they invited me to sit in on the Amazon class that's going on right now. 15 people signed up for that class. Now, with the virus going on, they probably lost a lot because they couldn't do it in person and doing it online. Um, but it's not as easy as everybody thinks. We make it sound easy, mm -hmm. but to 
have somebody, how many people are really going to be competitors at our level and come out and, and fight for us for those same dollars that we're getting? It takes a lot of work. I, I think that a lot of people that are listening are going to be maybe successful part-time sellers as a great supplemental income, but that's okay. You know, we, we need to help people. But I don't think they're ever going to be, there's not that many direct competitions that come out of helping folks, I don't think. I, I totally agree with that. And again, going back to the concept of you and I and how we share vendors and how Amy and I used to share vendors and we would literally like combine our orders so that we could get more of a mm -hmm. volume discount, except for she sold completely different products than me. And that wasn't necessarily on purpose. It was literally like, we sat down together, we went to a trade show, we got the catalogs, we got the wine out, we sat there and she's looking through that one, I'm looking through this one, I come up with a bundle concept and she comes up with a completely different one, same vendor. And it's just right. like, the sky is the limit. If you can, you know, if you can dream it up, there's somebody out there that wants to buy it, hopefully. I mean, obviously you gotta use your tools. Right. What's your favorite research tool? You know, I've done, I, I've never been one researching products using these companies because I've stuck with the suppliers we found. So my research is really going through catalogs, but I was a big fan of merchant words. I've used them a lot for listings and developing keywords. And I was paying attention a little bit to Helium 10 and I was reading some things that people wrote about on, on your Facebook page and in your information. And I've actually just hooked up with them for a free, um, the free part of it until, the problem with doing things is there's only so many hours in the day. Absolutely. Well, so my son and I get together and I go, hey, what do you think of Helium 10? He goes, oh, it sounds great. I said, okay, your job is to go figure it out. There you go. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, I only give him 4,300 other things to do. Mm -hmm. And I have things to do. And we don't get a chance to devote the time to learn it. So it's like, don't start paying monthly fees until you learn the system. But I Absolutely. think that looks like it has some really, really great tools. And for us, it's not going to be the finding the product as much as how to best find keywords and mer merchant See? merchandise. Now, that is where Helium 10 thrives. And that's why like, okay, I, y'all know me, y'all listen to me for a long time. And you know, first of all, you're probably like, why does she say y'all? She's from Michigan because I was born with a Southern soul. Okay. I belong in the sunshine with sweet tea and people who say y'all. So I'm just owning that. Like I, I, I'm Southern inside. I just live here anyway. <laughs> so y'all know that I'm such an advocate and I've always been an advocate for that, but I'm a slow technology person. So when I, Helium 10 first came out, I was like, I don't have time or energy to learn another platform. I really like merchant words because it's simple. It's right to the point. I can get keywords. And then like someone was like, I will show you how to do this because it will change the way you do business and how you write listings and all this kind of stuff. And so I'm like, okay, fine. So I gave an hour to a friend and a friend walked me through the, the three or four main, you know, how she uses it. She's a student and she walked me through how she uses it. And I was like, oh, that's really not that scary. I'm like, I can do this. And so I've been very much acquainted with uh, Helium 10 since then. It's only really been the beginning of this year. And as a matter of fact, um, Bradley Sutton is coming on the Amazon Files podcast soon. Um, and he's also coming in to do an exclusive training inside our Amazon Files Hub membership that we have. So if you're not a member of the Amazon Files Hub, you're going to miss out on specific straight up training from Brad from Helium 10 talking about the three tools that are best for bundlers. So he's going to go through those three tools. We're going to talk about like why that's beneficial for writing listings and other things. And he's exclusively coming to do this specific training just for us. So thanks Brad. Wow. And thanks people at Helium 10 for being willing to do that. If you want to know more about the hub, mommyincome.com slash hub. It is only for our wholesale bundle students and also special people like Al who already know wholesale bundles from top to bottom. Um, so if you, if that is you go to mommyincome.com slash hub and let us know if you can't get through for whatever reason, um, send me an email, direct message, whatever, and we'll get you hooked up to the hub because there's so much training in there. There's so much exclusive um, training that I negotiate for people to come in and myself and do Q and A's in there, which is the best. I love our Q and A's. Um, so yeah, shameless plug for the hub there, but like we are having Bradley come in and teach us Helium 10 because we need this. Um, and so that is going to be in June and y'all are going to want to come and 
join us there because that's going to be super fun. But Helium 10 is definitely one of my, my favorite tools. And I still use Merchant Words too for other reasons. I think they both do different things. So just wrapping it all up, can you give like our listeners just some, uh, a couple of pieces of advice of like, if you're going to do bundles, maybe a mistake to avoid. And then the biggest piece of advice. Um, I think the one mistake, they should try not to avoid. And I think I shared this at the, the seminar we had at, at the college. Um, it's great to sit there and, and they can't read your words wrong when you said, oh boy, you were so lucky you went home and you lost your job and everything, you know, this was great. Just like people losing their jobs now. I lost my job, but I started off with $175 investment while I was working. And it was a very slow process to grow the business. And I always caution people that I think my words I used at the meeting was, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. You know, the, the thing I hate to see is you'll see it on Amazon's bulletin board. Somebody's decided to get in the business. They went out and got a $30,000 loan to buy inventory. They're negotiating over in China. They had to bring in a thousand to get the price point. And they're online going, you know, it's been six months. Do you know where I can sell off my 960 units I have left? <laughs> so, you know, the whole trick is to, uh, to, to start small. And somebody wrote on your Facebook page the other day, they said, I'm doing my first couple of bundles. What should I do? I'm thinking about maybe doing 10 each or 20 each. Yes. Like you said, if you, if you lose money, you're not losing a lot of money. Yeah. Start small, take your successes, grow. Hmm. Don't say, oh, good, I lost my job. I can become a full-time Amazon person. Hmm. That's familiar. Dream, dream big, uh, step small. Hello, people. This is my book. Even know that. Everybody needs to know this. Um, get the book on Amazon, Dream Big, Step Small. It's Kindle, Audible, and that. Yeah, I know. Me and my Who's the author? Me. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. Come on. This is mine. Um, um, who's the author? <laughs> I love that. Um, you guys, step small. That's why I just spit the truth to people. Mm -hmm. I am never going to tell somebody, this is not get rich quick. This is get semi-rich really slow. <laughs> right. And right. so if that's what you're signing up for, great. Do I love my freedom? Yes. Do I love the working from home? Yes. Do I love the fact that I can literally go to Puerto Rico like I did in January, spend 10 days with my family and look at the sales for 10 days and go, wow. Well, and not just me, my entire company, my mom, myself, my admin, and my other admin, we all went to Puerto Rico because we're all family. And so no one was working during this time. And it was just still generating that money. It wasn't, it's not passive forever. It was 10 days. We got right back to work after we were done. But the reality is, is I love that part, but it is still work just because we work from home and perhaps in our pajamas and perhaps in like just hanging out my commute is from the coffee pot to my office does not mean that this isn't real work for real dollars i just wouldn't trade the benefits of every dollar that i earn goes into my pocket and then right. you know we pay people but like the reality is like i'm not earning money for boss man i'm not earning money for a giant corporation i'm not earning money for anything else every every hour that we put in as bundlers, we get back in our own pockets. We're not working for any other person. And so that's what I wouldn't trade, but is it work? Absolutely. Do I put as much hours in as, as everybody else? Perhaps more oh, <laughs> because absolutely. I can't help it. But you know, do, do you share that same experience? Well, it's, um, we, we tell people, my wife will say the same thing too. To me, this is still like a hobby. When I started doing this part-time, it was like a hobby you know, mm -hmm. for anybody. And I still feel that way. Yeah. Is it a drag sometimes? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of responsibility. I'm taking care of two families out of this business. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we try to do so much and you want to do it right. Um, but I still get up and it's like a hobby. You know, I've been doing this 18 years without working for anybody else. And I, I my dad, my son goes, dad, you're never going to retire from this. Why, you know, it's just not you. And I go, why would I? People retire to go get a job at a golf course or go, <laughs> whatever. I mean, I can come down and you know, walk in the office and go to work in the morning. Why you know, would you ever stop? I, I really love what you said there because I feel the same way and people think I'm crazy. Like I literally, I do, like I still geek out over going to trade shows. Like people get excited. I, I love concerts too, don't get me wrong. But like I get, I get excited about that. But when I get to go to a trade show, I'm like, this is fun to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I get to go see new products and think about different bundles and putting bundles together. And when my mom had, I have these brainstorm sessions of like putting bundles, like that doesn't feel like work to me. That feels like this is fun. This is cool. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, somebody said that to her 
her. My mom recently had eye surgery. She um, was having some issues with her eyes. And so she had full replacement LASIK, like it had to be, you know, done in her eyes. And, and the lady had asked her if she was retired and she goes, why would I retire? I love my job. And she was like, wow, I don't think I've ever heard that. And my mom's 63. So um, she just, we work together and she loves that. And she loves the fact that she can just take her laptop and literally go to Florida for three or four months and still do the same work, only not dealing with Michigan snow. So um, I, I love that you said that. And we're just going to kind of end on that note, just knowing that like you, you can love what you do and it doesn't feel like work and it feels more like a hobby. I mean, of course, there's always stuff we don't love about doing things and there's frustrations. That's normal. But the reality is like, if you really enjoy what you're doing, then it never feels like you're working. It just feels like you're, it, especially if you're getting all the benefits yourself. Right. So. Al, thank you so much for coming and to sharing your story and sharing your um, insights as a bundler, a, a veteran uh, seller, if you will, even old, more old school than me. Uh, I really appreciate that. For anyone who is interested in bundling, go to mommyincome.com slash system. That's where you can learn more about the wholesale bundle system, including the exclusive research framework that we have. And if you're interested in that, that's great. Until then, tune in next time, same place, same time on the Amazon files.